Laurie here. I'm back to start a new reading vlog. So it is February 7th. I actually had a pretty good reading week, um, which was nice because I took a little bit of a break from reading some high fantasy to read some adult, just adult fiction, which I really liked. So I am going to put down A Lady's Guys to Mischief and Mayhem by Manta Collins. I picked this up at the, like yesterday, and it's just, it's not reading as fast as I would like, and I... I think what I'm gonna do is once I'm done with my audiobook I think I'm just gonna buy this one on audible and see if I can just get through I have about 50% left but it's just it's just not grabbing my attention I need something to capture me right now so the theme for this reading vlog a skip for this one um will just be like retellings of some sort so the audiobook I'm listening to right now is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord, which is a You Got Mail retelling, which I'm really, really liking so far. This is a reread for me. I read this last year at about this time, and I really like that one, and I'm it's just so funny. I'm really, really liking the audiobook. Um, but the first book I'm going to pick up is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. This takes place in 1926 and in Shanghai. And I don't know a lot about this, but I know that there's gangsters, there's a blood feud, um, and I think these Juliet and Roma um, have to work together, and they're obviously on opposite sides of a war, um, because there is a madness of a monster in the shadows, and they, ha they have to work together to figure out what's going wrong, which I think sounds awesome, so... I'm really excited to start this one. So this is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. Um, the next one is one that I pulled from my TBR shelf, which is Speak Easy, Speak Love by Michaela George. This is a, is, this is a much to do about nothing retelling. And I've never read much to do about nothing, but my friend Tiffany says she really likes this one. And I think I'm going to need some later reads at the end of the week, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um... And then another high fantasy is The Avow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kimmer, which this is the, I think this is the third book in, in the concluding novel in the, the Curse of Dark and Lonely series. I have really liked the first two. Really excited to see how this book series concludes. And this is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast for the most part. There's, like, there's some other characters, but for the most part, it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And then the last book on this TBR is Smash It by Francine Simone. I recently bought this, so that's another reason. But I think someone told me it's like an Ophelia retelling. I don't know if it, that's true. I will report back at the end. But someone, when it was first coming out, it was pitched as like an Ophelia retelling. And it doesn't like say that. But I feel like it is an Ophelia retelling. So these are my basic TBR plans for this this um week I am going to start with these violent delights and I'm going to start with tweet cute um but some changes I've made um so this I, what I'm going to try to do this week is I'm going to try my hardest anyway is to not re-watch true crime videos that I've seen like a thousand times because I find that I'm I would much rather give that time to audiobooks or like um non-fiction reads or something like that just something that, like, is educating me because these true crime videos I've listened to so many times and I just feel like it's it's just would be more productive if I, you know, listen to podcasts or something. So I'm going to try to avoid listening to true crime videos that I've watched before just sort of end, like, my downtime. Um, but also this week I am getting my COVID vaccination and um, I'm just going into it thinking if I if there, if there are, any, are any side effects I will have some lighter reads at the end of the week and I'll probably start a new reading vlog for the weekend because next week I do have off and I do actually have off Friday which is actually good timing so I am gonna go start these violent delights and see how I'm feeling about that and I am going and then I'll probably update you guys when I read about 50 pages and see how I'm feeling about it um I also might take a little bit of a reading break and watch an episode of Big Bang Theory, um, which is my read that I would like to, st which is, which is, which is, I want to watch a couple of episodes tonight since I really don't watch the Super Bowl. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go watch an episode of Big Bang Theory, read a little bit of these violent delights, and then update you guys. And I think I am going to go purchase um, A Lady's Guide to Mischief and Mayhem so I can listen to that during work tomorrow. 
when I'm sort of doing my grading stuff because I don't have that much left in that book. So I think that's what I'm going to do tomorrow when I'm doing, when I'm organizing everything for work. I'll just kind of finish that audiobook off. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye. Laura here, I'm back. So I did actually wind up reading up to page 22. Again, this is a book that I'm really liking. I, I've had some really good luck in 2021 just finding beautiful reads to read. I read quite a few this year that have really stood out to me as having such beautiful writing styles. That hasn't been something I've been picking up a lot recently, like in the past. I But this year has been, maybe it's because I'm really focusing and I'm taking my time. But this book right off the bat has had such a stunning writing style. And I love that it's a retelling of Romeo and Juliet because I think that that is such a story that most kids do learn about in schools. And I just like that this is like a retelling of that. So basically it follows Roma and Juliet and they are on opposite sides of a gang war in Shanghai in Shanghai in, nine, I think it's like 1926? Yeah, 1926. So this is after the Opium Wars, which is a very pivotal time in China. Um, and you have Juliet, they're on opposite sides of, of, of a war and the book starts off with there being something that's killing their members. There is these fights, but people on both sides die and they don't they have like only like defensive wounds um and then Roma and Juliet kind of find their way back to each other because Roma needs Juliet's help and Juliet has been away for a couple of years which again is such a good decision I the one the one thing I struggled with when I originally read Romeo and Juliet as a kid was like I didn't understand like why they would do all these things if they had only met for like a week or two um, I do like that Ros um, Rosalind has a character in here. I think that that's going to be interesting. There are cousins in this book, which I do like. And I just like it's sort of like love to hate, but also like a flashback relationship. That's one of my favorite tropes. I love like blast from the past romances come back to the present. I also think that there's going to be a mystery element to this book and maybe some creepy elements as well. This cover from I Will Create This Edition is very, very pretty as well. But yeah, I'm really liking this. I'm so happy that I wound up, I, I wound up picking this book up. It's, it's just a delight. And as a theater teacher, I always look for books that I can kind of push on my students and say, ooh, this is a book that would be like a good retelling. Because we're actually having a, I'm actually going to be teaching a storytelling unit and a retelling unit in a couple of weeks. So I might use this as an example for them as well. But yeah, I am going to take a little bit of a reading break because I did actually wind up reading quite a bit this weekend. And I do want to watch a little bit of Big Bang Theory tonight. It is just a show that has been so long since I've watched it. I think it's it's been, it's, it's been a while. I, I don't even know when I watched it, but the like the early season. So I'm going to take a little bit of I'm going to take a little bit of a break, watch a few episodes of that, and I might watch Agents of Shield tonight as well because I want to try to make some progress on that and I'm right at the end of one of the seasons. So I will check in with you guys tomorrow, hopefully before work, and give you guys a check-in. But if not, I'll talk to you guys after work is over. Bye, guys. Right here, I'm back. So I just want to do some quick life updates, but also, like, reading updates. I didn't want to updating today because it was the first day back from school from a weekend, which is always feels like you go back to, like, a different world. But we did get a lot of news about teaching today, so I just wanted to kind of come in here and kind of talk about that. I do work in the New York City public school system. We will be going back starting the 24th and the 25th. 24th is the teacher prep day and 25th we will have students in the building, which is exciting. I'm relieved for a couple of reasons. I'm also relieved that by that point I w my, I'm getting my second vaccination. Thursday I will be fully vaccinated by the time kids are in a building and by the time I'm commuting for the most part, which is like a relief. They're also shortchanging our schedule a little bit. So instead of seeing my kids once every eight days, I'm going to see them like every like two days. So like two days on, two days off, two days on, two days off, which for me is like one day on, one day off, one day on, one day off. But still, it's a lot better transitional than like eight. Um, and it's funny, you know, sometimes fate just works in like the kindest of ways. Because I, I, as I said in a couple of these past reading blogs, if you follow along weekly, um, I did spend a couple of weeks prepping until the end of the year, and I know, know that I had enough material and everything, and I sort of planned that second day thinking 
well, I'll make it like a learning day. And if they're on their own, they can kind of go through the stuff on their own. But miraculously, fate sort of worked out that I'm going to see them that day as well. And then they only have one assignment to do by themselves, which is a relief. And I'm just hopeful that the kids that have not been appearing online will just come in school like they should have all this time. So that is a big relief. I'm also just relieved that by then I will be mostly vaccinated. Um, and I'm grateful that the DOE and the New York Public Health were able to get teachers included in that process. Um, and it's also just really safe to say, I, I just said this before, I live with my grandparents, I live with my mom, my mom and my dad and my uncle. They're older, obviously, so it's just a concern. And I, you know, being safe, of course, and like masking and stuff like that and social distancing. But I'm hopeful that like with all those things in place and the vaccination, I will feel a little bit safer on the on the train because I take the Long Island Railroad to the city and then I take the subway back to my school. So it's just a little bit of a commuting process. And commuting was the one thing I was the most worried about. But now a small reading update. I have made so much progress on Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. That book is just a joy. I love it so much. And it's so funny because I'm reading a Romeo and Juliet retelling right now. I'm reading These Violent Delights. That is like, oh, you got male retelling meets Romeo and Juliet. I'm just loving it. If you have not heard about Tweet Cute, what it is is you follow these two kids, Pepper and Jack. And they're kind of on opposite sides of a Twitter war. And Pepper's mom owns a big um, grilled cheese company, like like a big, like, burger place and these two places have the same exact grilled cheese recipe and you find out at the end of the book like how that happened um but they kind of get like caught up in this twitter war and they kind of like wind up um tweeting against each other in this and the, the world gets involved that's one element but then there's like they actually start talking to each other they're on like the swim team together and then there's a messaging app in the book that they are talking to each other but they don't know that they're speaking to each other it is a joy it is such a fun listen I find myself just wanting to listen to that audiobook so I really like I went for a walk today I like did a lot of things just so I could keep listening and I'm right at the crux of the story so I'm really excited to dive back into that actually like right now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go read um but I didn't read a lot I think I read like like two pages from um, these violent delights so I didn't read any more from yesterday I'm gonna actually probably re 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 reread that page last night I did watch a couple of episodes of Big Bang Theory I am going to watch a couple more tonight but I do want to watch two episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and then I'm gonna watch some um, Big Big Bang Theory I'm still on season one it is very very fun it's been so long since I watched those episodes so yeah, my, I'm going to go watch my longer true crime videos that are like new that I haven't seen before. I actually did pretty good. I actually haven't watched any older true crime videos and I've actually stopped, like gave myself a news break and that was sort of helpful that I actually have time for audiobooks and also kind of going forward when I do go back to work, I will have a lot more audiobook and podcast listening time because I'll be on a train for like three hours a day. So I'm going to go start, I'm going to go read a read about 50 pages of These Violent Delights, and then I will give you guys a quick update. Sorry for the long update. There was a lot to update you guys on, but I will update you guys again when I read a little bit more. Talk to you guys in a bit. Bye. Here I am back. It's almost 8 o'clock. I did wind up reading about page 74 in These Violent Delights by Chloe Dong. I really am enjoying this book. It's just a book that I really need to focus on. I'm not even like listening to background noise like my YouTube videos that I normally watch, but I really like it. One thing I really like about this book is it's almost like an a sequel to the Romeo and Juliet story. In some ways it's a sequel, and I'm liking that because I just think it really gives you a lot of like depth to the characters, and we as the audience are sort of a well aware of the Romeo and Juliet story, but I just like how it's sort of diving into a lot of other things. I love the big cast of characters. I love the backdrop, the, the background of the story that we have. I think that that's really, really fun. And I'm just captivated. It's a very, very rich world. Chloe's Gong writing style is definitely really interesting and really compelling, and I'm really enjoying it. So I am going to stop reading for the night. I didn't read as much as I wanted, but I am hopeful that tomorrow I can sort of catch up. Um, also tomorrow, this is also a shorter week. I only have to teach until Thursday and Thursday I'm going to get my COVID vaccination. So hopefully I will have a little bit of t more time to read. 
but I am really enjoying this and I did make quite a bit of progress on Tweet Cute today. So I will definitely read this more tomorrow. I am going to watch a few episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I want to watch two episodes tonight and then watch a little bit of Big Bang Theory and kind of catch up. But I want to do a few little errandy things. I also have to double check that I have everything for school in, a, in the next couple of weeks. I think I do. I just have to just double check. And I also have to finish my calendars when I'm on break because I'm going to be seeing my coworkers and those calendars are for them. So a couple of things just to keep in the back of my head. But I will definitely, definitely check in with you guys tomorrow. I don't know. I may read one more chapter of this book. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that's my plan. I might read a few more chapters. But either way, I'll update you guys tomorrow. Okay. Just checking back in. It is almost 6 o'clock. I did wind up working all day. Um, I did mention in my previous video that they did decide that we are going to go back the week after break, so we have a little bit of time to prep, and I am was figuring out what posts I'm doing. There's a couple of days we go into the building and there's no students, so I had to prep some stuff, but I did get my work done. It was actually a pretty easy teaching day. I'm teaching them about imagination, which is a fun unit. But I did also wind up listening to a little bit more of Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. I... Well, and I have about two hours left, which is probably like an hour and a half left. I hope to finish that book tomorrow. That's my goal. Um, but I also did make a little bit more reading progress about these Violent Delights. I'm really enjoying this. Definitely the madness and the mystery element is kind of encompassing. Basically, there's something that's basically making these on both sides of this war die. And you have Roma and Juliet who are basically, you know, they're... They definitely love to hate romance, but this is like the after effect of after they were in a relationship and after Juliet went to New York, um, and now she's back and they're sort of dealing with the after effects of this madness this, that is sort of overtaking the town and they are sort of forced to work together. The one thing I like is that the characters are a little bit older, but also they do have a lot of history with each other. And I love the setting of China. I think it's amazing and I'm really enjoying it. They also do have the opium dens are very, very prominent in this book, which is a part of history that I am not that super familiar with, but I really like how Chloe Gong is making that an element. I love Roma and Jule as, char Roma and Jule as characters. I also like all the side characters we're getting. It's really, really fun. So I'm going to keep reading and I'll update you guys when I get up to page 150. Catch you guys in a bit. Here I'm back. It's out about 8 30. I'm I am also watching an episode of Nancy Drew, which is very, very creepy. That is one of the only like horror shows I can watch and be okay with it, but I like the cast of characters. But I went up getting up to page 50 in these Violence Delights by Chloe Gong. I really am liking this book. The mystery is heating up. She's also having more interactions with her cousins in this book. I've said it in like a couple of reading vlogs. I've been reading a lot of cousin themed books. But I will say this book is, I would not call it horror, but I would say it's very, very eerie. It's very, very creepy. There's a lot of blood and gore in this book in like sort of like an unexpected way. I know like if you watch like a production, you'll see a lot of fighting and stuff like that. This one is, you know, the, it, it is more of a gun society, so it's not like swords, which is normally what you see in Roma Juliet's. But the madness, the, they call it the madness, is eerie creepy and really really gory so just be warned if you're not okay with that it does make you be like Egh. um but it's really good I'm really liking both characters a lot and I can't wait to keep reading so I will update you guys tomorrow I hope to tomorrow read another 100 pages um and I will update you guys I also do hope to finish tweet cute tomorrow that's another plan as well but I will update you guys tomorrow okay here just checking back in it is about five o'clock i did wind up going for a walk i worked out a little bit i did my rnd stuff i also taught this is the last full day before i have my covid vaccination so i'll be teaching a little bit tomorrow but not a lot so i also did actually make up quite a bit of reading listening progress today not a whole lot of reading progress i only read like a chapter of these violent delights but i was able to finish tweet cute i still stand by it i think that that is an adorable read it is a nice mix between You Got Mail, but also Romeo and Juliet in a contemporary setting. Emma Lord's writing style is so fun. And I just love Pepper and Jack. Like, they're just fun main characters. I really like that one. Why not giving that one five stars? 
I also did decide to DNF for the moment a lady's guide to mischief and mayhem by Amanda Collins. I just, I'm not feeling it. The audiobook is not engaging me. The book was not engaging me, which I'm bummed about because I did want to buy in the audiobook. I'm going to see if I can return the audiobook, um, maybe give the book to a friend, but it's just not working for me and I don't want to force myself to read something that I don't enjoy. So I am going to DNF that, but I did wind up picking up an offer from a gentleman by Julia Julia Quinn, which is the third book in the Bridgerton series, and this is Benedict's book, and it is a Cinderella retelling, which is amazing. So I'm really excited for that. I also found out that the Avengers reading challenge I'm doing is doing like a 24, 48 hour reading challenge, a, re um, a readathon this weekend that I'm definitely going to participate in. So I'm probably going to try to wrap this reading blog up by tomorrow. <laughs> Hopefully I will have made some substantial progress on this. I'm only on page 150 in it, but I do want to make some progress. I'm actually going to go try to read quite a bit of this um, and just quarter catch up on um, stuff I haven't seen today. So I'm going to go do that and I will update you guys when I read about 50 more pages and give you guys my thoughts. Talk to you guys in a bit. Bye. Here it is officially break, which is really exciting. I did wind up getting my COVID vaccination part two, so we'll see how that goes. I'm feeling fine. My arm is still a little bit sore. I'm a little bit tired, but other than that, no real side effects, which is good for the moment. We'll see if that changes. I'll definitely keep you guys updated. But I did wind up reading a little bit more. I'm up to page 260 in these Violent Delights. The mystery has definitely developing. The characters are working together. We're also getting a lot of information about the side characters in this book. I really love the world building. I really love the writing style. And I love that the characters are sort of forced to work together. One thing I really enjoy about this book is the history that Romeo and Ju well, Roma and Juliet are kind of dealing with because they do have a relationship. They, ha they, 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 they did date some years ago and there were some effects of their dating that are still kind of de dealing with it. And then there's this mystery element of madness that's sort of sweeping through Ch Shanghai that I'm really liking. There's also the gang element. It's a really complicated read. So my goal is to just sort of read this for the rest of the day. I'm going to try to finish watching Nancy Drew. I didn't finish watching it last night because I was catching up on the impeachment stuff and I just wanted to make sure I was well educated. But I am going to try to give this a good go because I do want to start the Avengers reading a thon tomorrow and I would like to start with some fresh reads. But that is all going to going accord of how I'm feeling, which right now I'm feeling fine and hopefully that could happen. But I am going to read a little bit more, try to finish Nancy Drew, and then I will catch up with you guys. Bye. Right here, just checking back in. It is about 5 o'clock. I did wind up getting up to page 312 in These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I'm really getting to the crux of this book. The one thing I'm, it's very gory, I will say that. So I just want to preface that I do not like gore, and this is a gore that is still like, black. like, I don't like it, but I'm intrigued enough. I like the madness and how that's sort of developing. I will say there is elements of like a plague in here. So if you're really touchy about that stuff, especially because you're in the middle of living through a pandemic, I would maybe put off reading this. But I do think there's a lot of talk about Americanization. She's a, she's um Juliet as a character that went to live in America for a couple of years. There also is a lot of gang situations. I do like the Romeo and Juliet re or Roma and Juliet relationship in the story. I think it's really interesting how she sort of spun it to have these characters have a deep history, which is definitely the highlight of the read for me for sure. I also like all the side characters that we're getting. Really, really great. So I'm going to read about probably like 50 more pages. I'll probably get up to like 350 or 3 a little bit, and then I'll give you guys like another quick update. My goal is to finish this book tonight. That's my goal um, because I do want to start the Avengers reading on a little bit fresh, um, but I am still feeling good, so that's good. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go read a little bit more, and I will check in with you guys when I read about 50 more pages. Bye. Here, just giving another check-in. It's about 6.16. I did want to finish watching my two episodes of Nancy Drew, which was my goal. I am also up to page 350. By the way, Nancy Drew is an amazing show. Very, very creepy. Very, very eerie. Right balance of horror for me. Really, really liking it. And I know it's... I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it, but I'm really, really liking it. Um, but I also am really liking this story a lot. I think it... It's set at such an interesting time because it's set after the original Romeo and Juliet story, but has a lot more depth to it. I really like the mystery elements. I like how these two characters are forced to work together. 
I like that there's a lot of secrets and intrigue. I just am really liking it. I think a lot of the situations these characters get in are really interesting. There's also a lot of family dynamics that are interesting for both Roma and Juliet that I'm really enjoying. So yeah, I'm going to read about 50 more pages and then I'm going to give you guys another update. So when I get up to page 400, I'll probably give you guys another quick update. And that will probably be my last update. But I'm really loving the world. I'm loving her writing style. Again, this is one of those books I've read recently that the writing style has really like stood out to me. So many good quotes. And you could definitely see how they're, she's weaving in some of the Romeo and Juliet elements. There's some massive elements that have been not included. But I think the reasoning for those elements not being included is kind of the catalyst for this whole story. Um, there's also a lot about Juliet and her time in America, which I'm enjoying, and I'm just really, really liking this book. So, we're going to about 50 more pages, and I'll give you guys a quick update. Bye. It's still actually evening. It's actually like 9.13, but I did wind up relaxing a little bit, and I do want to finish this book tonight. So, I did wind up reading up to page 400 in These Violent Delights. I have to admit, I am loving this book. I think this is definitely going to be a five-star read for me. Because I think it did the Romeo and Juliet myth in a way that I've never really read it before. And I've read a lot of Romeo and Juliet element retellings. I'm involved in theater, so I've seen a lot of like plays and read stories like that. Watched a lot of TV shows that have had the star-crossed lovers trope. This book, I think, has done it the best that I've read in quite some time. I just love the setting. I also, she's a very, very beautiful writer. I think 2021 is going to be the year for beautiful books or beautiful writers that I have read. Um, I read a few last year. Cassie Clare is another one. But she's a very, very stunning writer. She had a passage in this book about America and, you know, from, like, a Chinese point of view. And in, in, um, what year is this book taking place? In, like, oh, where, what is it? Where is, let's see. I think it's, like, 1960. Let me see what the page say. I always forget. 1926. So looking back at 19, in, the, in 1926 in the 20s, like what was happening in America and what is happening in this book, I think is very, very pertinent. But I just love how we get so many different point of views, not even just, just Roma and Juliet, but also a lot of other side characters. I'm really, really liking it. I'm going to keep reading and I will give you one final check-in. Um, and yeah, we'll chat about it when I'm done. Talk to you guys in a bit. Bye. Here I am back to wrap up this reading vlog. So I actually did sort of a dual reading vlog that I really wasn't planning on. I wound up listening to two Romeo and Juliet retellings. One was Tweet Cute, which I would argue is sort of a you Juliet Romeo and Juliet retelling contemporary mixed with like a You Got Mail retelling. Really liked that. Gave that five stars. And I also wound up finishing These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I wound up adoring this book. Another strong five-star read for me. I really love the twist on Romeo and Juliet. I thought it was great. I love the setting. I want to read the author's note tomorrow probably because I didn't get around to reading that. But it was great. I loved how she sort of developed the story and sort of set this in the aftermath of... It's sort of a sequel, I would say, to Romeo and Juliet in some ways, but also like a totally new story. I love this setting. Again, her writing style is just stunning and beautiful, and I was really impressed with it for a debut. Um, I've read quite a few books this, this year so far that have been beautifully written. So many good quotes. I'm so glad I started a bullet journal just to write down all my favorite quotes. I really, really like this one. Definitely going to be a five-star read. Definitely might make one of my favorite reads of the year, but I'm going to definitely have to reread it closer to when... Um, the second book comes out, but overall, such a solid read. So I'm going to go start my next reading vlog, which is a themed reading vlog. I hope you guys will tune in for that, and I'll talk to you guys later.